Hey, what's up you guys? In this video, we're going to cover building a wine barrel chair with a taller barrel versus like a regular size barrel. So I've got two wine barrels here. This one's a little shorter, see? And this one's a little taller. And so we're gonna be making a chair that looks like with this barrel. Now I believe these are called cigar barrels, but... So I built this chair with a normal barrel, but as you can see, <laughs> I mean, it's on rockers, but it's a much taller chair. So I skipped the fun stuff in this video, which is breaking down the barrel, um, sanding it, and then doing the cuts, doing all the things. All right, so when you first break down, all of these staves are gonna be really just, they're gonna have a uh, sharp edge on all of them, and they're gonna have uh, crystals on them and uh, all sorts of stuff. And so we sand everything down, um, and then I applied polyurethane to all of them so that they have a nice, um, protection because more often than not they're outside. I lack the initiative to make money with these plans so they're just there for free in my bio. You can make this yourself. So we're going to take the back legs and we're going to mark 17 to 18 inches depending on your comfort and then we're going to attach the seat boards to the back legs. The first two seat boards we attach are the back seat board and the front seat board. And we're going to make a little picture frame out of it. So barrel staves are tricky because they're round. So it's hard to check squareness, but you can always take measurements. And so just see if the distance is good when you're putting everything together. All right, sweet, the picture frame is done. And so now we're gonna fill in the frame with the rest of the seat boards. And then we'll attach those and just check for even spacing as you go. Wine barrels are made from oak. Oak is hard, pre-drill everything. Seriously, everything. Next, we're gonna attach the front legs and I mark mine about 14 inches off of the ground. I have made a new habit of every time a surface screw is being made, I pre-drill with a Forstner bit so that I can hide the hole later on. And now we're gonna create a layout for the back. The fan shape that I use, I measure from the top of the board and I go down seven and a quarter inches on each side. And then I do seven and a half inches from the top to the center. And then I work my way um, and create the fan shape. All right, once the top board is on, we're gonna put on the bottom board. And I measure this three inches from the bottom. And, and then I try to get an even distance between the top board and the bottom board as well. I will admit that I have been very crooked putting these boards together in the past. For the middle board, it needs to be 11 inches from the bottom of the bottom board to the top 
of the middle board. <laughs> that might be confusing. From the bottom of the bottom board to the top of the middle board is 11 inches. And that way it's got something to sit on and it's got something for the arms to sit on. Next, we attach the arms. And I like for the arms to have a four inch overhang on the front. The back's gonna be different because every barrel is a little different in height. Um, but yeah, four inches on the overhang on the front. And then we're going to be looking at about a 21 inch gap between the front leg and that back middle board where you're gonna attach the arm. So I just wanna take a moment here. If you have three drills, one to pre-drill, one to do the Forzner bit and then the other one to drive the screw in. That's really great. I don't have a wish list, but if I did, I'd ask for another drill. <laughs> All right, now that we've got the arms attached, it's time to flip this baby over and attach the bottom board from underneath. What's really important here is that you pre-drill because you'll split this board. I've done it too many times. So just nice and easy. And now it's time to attach the bunghole. <laughs> this is your front brace. Um, and I use two inch screws for this. This is the only time I stray from the one and five eighths inches. And then your very last pieces to add, unless you're building a rocking chair, are your leg braces. And so we'll just set these up. Um, I like to mark four inches off of the ground and then we'll attach the front first and then the back next. Ah, uh, the recurring theme of the Forstner bit. Yes. Okay, first off, shout out on this angle. Get out of here. Um, but yeah, now we're just going to attach the final screws, but we've got a pre-drill and do the Forzner bit on uh, six new holes. So let's do that. Also, a shameless plug, if you do enjoy watching this kind of stuff, I always appreciate it if it's liked and followed. The YouTube algorithm likes it too. So uh, thank you very much. So you might be asking yourself if two screws per joint seems excessive. It definitely is a lot, but I have found that it makes the chair significantly more sturdy. So I'd highly recommend two screws for every joint. And so now this chair is officially done, unless we want to do finish work or we want to turn it into a rocker. So let's turn it into a rocker, flip it over. I had been intimidated about building a rocking chair until I learned that all it takes is putting two runners on and they fit perfectly. So you can make a rocking chair pretty easily.
I would like to add though, that you definitely need to pre-drill here and really watch your connection because you can split all of these boards really easily. Um, you're also going to want to inset the screw so that when it's rocking, the screw's not touching the ground because it'll scratch up your floor. Once you get the runners attached, flip it over and see how it rocks because you might have to adjust it. Oh yeah. Ooh. So I'm getting out the Forzner bit again and we're gonna inset the screws. There you go. Personally, this is the worst part for me because when you think you're done, there's finish work to do. <laughs> so we're gonna fill these holes, glue it, set the dowels in, and we'll wait for it to dry before we can sand it down. Now this chair layout has 16 holes to fill. I've seen more, I've seen less, but once it's dry, we saw it off and then we sand. And then of course, with the sanding, you're gonna knock off the color. So we're gonna do a little bit of stain to touch up. Once the stain is dry, we'll put poly on it and then we'll be all done. Okay, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We just saw beginning to end building a wine barrel rocking chair. Um, if you liked it, like, subscribe, follow, do the things, appreciate it. Until next time.